is that? Today, our search brings us to Melbourne, Florida, in search of Eastern Florida State College Science Professor Yekaterina Belaya, also known to her family and community members simply as Katie. Katie was last seen leaving her home in her 2013 white Honda Odyssey. She told her daughter she was going to the store and would be home in just 30 minutes. She never came back that night. who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. cracking cold cases for free. We're heading over right now to begin our search today at Katie's residence. We're viewing this as a possible accident scenario because we know that she was suffering from episodes of blackout prior to her disappearance, as well as episodes of confusion. Today, we're really hopeful that we can bring her family, her friends, her community, and the students and faculty at Eastern Florida State College some answers. I left my card on the husband's door. Um, he does get home around four or five o'clock. So even though him and Maria didn't get our previous um, outreach attempts, he'll, see, he'll definitely see the car today when, uh, when he gets home. So maybe we'll get a little bit more information from that. The neighbor told me, which she's been there since uh, Katie disappeared. And she did say that um, she was just going to get milk that night. She left the house to go get milk. And we specifically talked about where she would go if she had to go get milk. And she, without a doubt, was said Walgreens. Walgreens, you know, then and or she would go to Walmart or Publix. I'm going to run in here to the uh, country club office here and meet with one of the ladies she told me to meet with, see if we can get a little bit of extra information. Well, well good luck. Yeah, if, if, if anything happens, if anything happens, I'll reach out to you guys immediately since it, you know, you're in charge of the community here. So I just got through meeting with the uh, uh, board of directors here in the clubhouse for the community. Um, I was provided with survey mapping of the waters that they've done here. And they've reiterated a bunch of locations here that we were suspecting routes to possible stores. Some of those stores weren't even in existence. So I have a good list of what not to check as far as routes from here to potential stores. She left the neighborhood. She's on, they have her on video leaving the neighborhood. There's one way in and one way out for this side of the neighborhood. The one body of water that's that way that might be a potential accident location, they just unearthed and drained the entire thing. And they were whole, they said they were holding their breath the entire time because they knew it was possible. So that rules that one out, which we, that was the first one we were going to, which is great. It makes what we're doing more efficient. And she reiterated that the gas station and the Walgreens were the only direct stores if you were going to get milk or something like that at night. So let's see. So based on that, how many targets do we have? Not many. Not, I think maybe one. So we just made a right down Pinehurst, traveling in the direction of Walgreens that she would have taken, going to get milk. And we're coming up on the first body of water in question, and you can clearly drive right into it. And we're going to make our way right here. Now let me look at the property survey that was just completed two years ago, which would have been five years after she went missing. So this is really good information right here. We just pulled over right here. So the average water depth right off the shore here is five feet. 
which is enough to create buoyancy in a vehicle and you can see here it gets deeper so here it's 17 feet at the deepest and here is five feet so between here and here it's, it's going to be 10 feet not too far out so we know that this body of water automatically is deep enough to conceal a vehicle even a white vehicle so let's get in here and either rule this location out or we'll find it If there's a vehicle in this pond, it's her vehicle. There's no reason a vehicle should be in this little retention pond. It's a, it's a lot different when we find vehicles at boat ramps where there's a lot of stolen ditched vehicles. There's no reason here for there to be a ditched stolen vehicle. We're talking about the middle of a community, her community that she went missing from seven years ago. The road right here where we're parked it's just clear access into this pond. Really consistent eight feet. And we're talking about a minivan now. This is a little bit taller than the typical vehicle we were looking at. Three and a half feet, four feet, yeah. It's not gonna be over here. So just, just to see how accurate of the mapping that we will provide it with for the property is we're going to go straight across to see if we can detect anything close to 17 feet okay live scopes reading 14 feet 15 feet 16 feet 17 feet 18 feet 18 and a half feet i'm reading 18 on both the systems it's good to know I feel confident now that their mapping is accurate. Goes to show, you know, what I've learned to say and what I live by now is you never judge a water, a body of water, any body of water by its appearance. You never know how deep it is. All right, that concludes our search in this body of water. Our first location has been ruled out. On to the next. So we've retraced her route out of the neighborhood. There's no other bodies of water other than the ones we searched on her route to Walgreens, which we're pulling up to right here in a few seconds. So we have a pond right behind Walgreens that we're gonna be searching right now. Maybe she made a wrong turn into there. But who knows? It's just way too close to Walgreens for us not to search. I have a Cocoa Beach, Florida number calling me, which is local. Uh, this is Doug, how can I help you? Hi, uh, you left your business card uh, on my door today uh, in Suntry in Melbourne. Yes, sir. What happened, we do not know, but she's been disappearing for many, many hours for a couple of months prior to that, like literally coming home really late uh with no I, I had no idea where she even was she would refuse to answer the questions and uh we, we don't know where she went and what she did over that time i was very worried about her i told her that she needs to let me know where she is and she says it's none of your business and i'm okay blah 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 she was very defiant and completely irrational there was one incident when my daughter was in the vehicle and she called me she was about 13 years old and she said mom is driving on the bridge dad i'm afraid we're gonna go um, off the bridge because that's the way she was driving erratically she meant to mention one other time that she had thoughts about going off the bridge but uh, nothing that night indicated that she was absolutely calm. She mm -hmm. said she left for just like 30, 40 minutes. We tracked her credit card. There was not a single spend in that night. So she, I don't think she ever went to the grocery store, but she went on US one. I'm pretty sure about that. 
last time her phone pinged was by Painita Causeway um, by the river. She was on a, in a conversation with a friend for about an hour, and there is a park there, in fact, too. One is called Rotary Park. He used to go there a lot to sort of like vent out and to just, just, just stand there and smoke by herself. There is another one that if you uh, go on US-1 and pass Painita, right after the bridge, you're gonna see on the left, there is a public park, which is basically a dock in a pavilion on the river. It's sort of in a park. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fishing dock. So she could have gone there, one of these two places where her phone pinged. If I uncover anything, you will be the first to know before I even notify authorities. I think we just found out where she is, right? She's not here. We don't even have to put this boat in here. We're going right to the park. We're going right to the river. It's where I wanted to be anyway. That's where the boat ramps are. Yeah, it has to be deep enough. This and everything else out here is completely ruled out. It, I say, let's go. Let's go. We're gonna, we're gonna clear the whole river. We're dealing with very high winds. It's choppy, but uh, we're gonna get out here and try our hardest no matter what. Definitely makes reading sonar very hard. I see a lot of sandbars out there, so it's... Who knows, we'll, we'll, we'll clear both sides of this river. See all those fish, wow. Nine feet deep right here. Seven feet where we're at. Six feet. You gotta be really careful not to hit these rocks. They're very sharp. They will sink this boat the second they touch it. Cell phone died there. I'm guessing over there where the RV is. We'll go underneath the bridge over here. We're in two feet of water above coral, so we really have to be careful here. So the Rotary Park is actually two miles to the north on this river, on this shore that we're on. So we're in the right place. When we scan this section under the causeway on both sides, we have our cell phone pinging here, last pinging here near the causeway. We're gonna rule this out. So far, it is way too shallow and honestly way too dangerous for us to be here, but man, we're doing what we can do. Six feet deep. All of the pillars coming up perfectly. At this point, I can confidently say that we have ruled out the west side of the causeway shoreline area without a doubt. So this concludes our search of the western shore of the Indian River near the Pineda Causeway. We're gonna leave here now and go up to Rotary Park which her husband mentioned, this is where she liked to go. She would hang out, she would decompress at times, and where they suspect she had a 40 minute long conversation with a friend before her phone went dead in this area. So we're here at Rotary Park where Katie's 
husband explained to us she liked to come. This was a very significant place to us. And as you know, in our searches, we usually pick places that are sentimental to people, where they come usually. Unfortunately, this location, we can completely rule out. Josh threw up the drone. You can see from the aerial footage, this is shallow, at least 100 yards out. There's no way the vehicle is gonna make it in here and make it out past this shelf. We're here and the next, the next logical course of action in this investigation is gonna be boat ramps. Where can we go for a boat ramp that's gonna be feasible? So here we have a lake. Uh, we have Lake Washington Park. There's boat ramps there. And in relevance to the causeway, this is a significant place to search. Three feet, a lot of shallow water here. So while we're here, let me see if there is anywhere else in this park you can get a vehicle into and maybe there's a deeper area. I don't wanna leave this area unless we consider all possibilities for this park. So, you know, after speaking to her ex-husband earlier, I was really optimistic in regards to the information he provided. I still am in finding her. You know, we have some good locations yet to go, but you know, the, the, the information in regards to the cell phone ping, that was just huge. And um, now that we're able to rule that area out where the cell phone died, you know, the Rotary Park where she liked to go, you know, those were, that, that, that was just pivotal information in investigations like this and for what we do. Being as though our specialty is water, that information directly led us to water. And yeah, it's, uh, it, 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 it takes the air out of what we're doing today. You know, it, it, it's really, but you know, really, I don't, I don't really know what to say other than you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to stay focused, keep my mind off of you know, the letdown of that location, and we just keep trekking on. We're gonna keep searching. We still have several really good locations to go. So I mean, this search is far from over, far from over. This water is a lot darker than what we were dealing with out in the Indian River near the coast. There was a lot more visibility here. It's, it gets very dark. You know, you can't see no more than a foot under the surface. So we gotta be thorough with what we're doing. Not deep enough to hide a minivan. This is going to conclude our search here at Lake Washington Park. It's clear. There's no other access points uh, based upon road entries, park entries, other than where we're at, the two locations we just cleared. On to the next location. Right now we're headed to Ballard Park where there are two boat ramps really in close vicinity to each other. So we're gonna put a boat in there and we're gonna search that entire little cove area as well as the shoreline right there next to Ballard Park. That's where we're going from here. So we have two possibilities of entrances right here. 
right there where you see that pylon right there is nine feet deep. So this is definitely deep enough to conceal a vehicle. So we're gonna cover this entire park area because there's nothing obstructing a vehicle from driving right in off the park. So far, this ramp here is completely clear. Now, when we go around in the cove, we're gonna go to, over here on our right near Route 1, where there's another little boat ramp right off of Route 1. So we're here where there's access for a vehicle to come in right off the side of Route 1. A lot of debris down there, but nothing the size of a vehicle. these two locations out. We're at one of our last locations for this investigation based upon what we have to go on. Right now, we're using the theory that she left home, did what she had to do, and was making her way back into the neighborhood. If that's the case, right here, when you make a left into the neighborhood, you have two ponds right here. One of them's not showing up. If you make this left, you can end up in this pond. If you make this left and could become uncontrolled, you could end up in this pond as well. We're gonna get the boat out right now, and we're gonna see what's in both of these ponds right here. Right here is where she would have made the turn, where the white car is, you do it uncontrolled, end up through here. Right here is gonna be the projection of where a vehicle should go. And there's, you're, you're, you're just, you're not making it in there. It's so shallow. And it's so crystal clear. You can see the bottom. The visibility is insane here. As this, with as shallow as this is, and the vehicle being white, it'd be very visible. Let's go over to the other pond, because the other pond is still a possibility. So, more than halfway out, like you can see all the way out there, all the way, it's no more than two feet, halfway out. To, it's going to be impossible for her vehicle to make it in here and be completely submerged and not visible. It rules the theory out that she came back home and wrecked into either one of these ponds. They're just, it's, it's not going to happen. We have to go back and rule out that pond behind Walgreens. So that's where we're going to go right now. can't leave an open end to this. We were here, we had the boat on the bank of this and we just abandoned it. So to be thorough, especially for you guys at home, if we are in a position when this all comes to an end and we do not find her, this is gonna be a, a thing where we have to cover all our bases. Yeah, I mean, even though you can see the weeds, yeah. it could drop off. And right here, you could come in from an angle. Got my tail? Yeah, I got you. It's just unfortunately not that deep enough. It's not gonna hide a six foot white vehicle. According to the husband, there's a, where, there, there's a bridge in the area. 
can drive down in the middle of and get near down near the water. We didn't see anything like that today, but we're gonna go back to the drawing board, look at some satellite imagery on Google to see if we can figure out one of those locations. We'll be back on the Indian River tomorrow for day two. My thoughts on this particular location is based upon what we have to go on, cell phone information, and most importantly to me, what the ex-husband is feeling. This is the only logical place for us to continue our search today. Looking out, it appears to be shallow the way the Indian River was for us yesterday on the other side. However, the husband really feels strongly about this location. So, you know, in working with families, it's at this point really my duty to make sure that I rule out the Banana River here on this side, because once you cross over the island on the causeway, we're on the Banana River now, which runs parallel to the Indian River on the other side where we were yesterday. He feels really strongly about the middle of the rivers. So we're gonna clear the middle of the rivers for him it's possible. It is really, really possible. So, like I said, this is the only logical place for us to be at this moment in this investigation based upon the information that we have. So we're going to do our best. So, out here, in the channel, it's only 11 feet in the Banana River. Can it get deeper in other areas? Yes, absolutely. But here near this causeway where her cell phone last disappeared, it's not as deep as we thought it was. Nowhere near as deep as we thought it was. So we're gonna just continue to go along the road here. Maybe we might hit a deep pocket, but It's 10 feet under the bridge. It's starting to drop a little bit, 14.2 feet, 13. Very clear and it's very shallow, even for the huge channel through here. It's not that big. It's really honest depth here. A lot of fish, but nothing, nothing so far. Everything comes up here, and these are the bridge columns that we're passing. So really, it gives you an idea. We can detect absolutely everything here. Just really, really clean bottom. We're not detecting anything. If there's a car out here, we're definitely gonna be able to find it. If there's a vehicle in here, we would have found it. No, I, I can clearly detect any other anomaly that's been down here, whether it's a tire or a log. We're detecting all of those things. Oh, there's a boat up there, sunken boat. Been there for a while, a little sailboat. Her vehicle's not here in this portion of the river where her cell phone died. The disappearance of Katie Belaya, according to the information that we've uncovered, is absolute a mysterious disappearance that has just baffled us to this point. We're here at Rotary Park where we know Katie liked to come from time to time. Whether it was to take in the salty air, the views, she was struggling with some mental health and depression issues. So if you know someone, whether it's a friend, family member, I wanna take a second to urge you to please be there for them, check on them, talk to them about what they're struggling with. Mental health and depression is a problem that goes unnoticed and we deal with quite frequently in a lot of these cases. So be there for your loved ones, be there for your friends, check in with them. You never know 
when a conversation might help somebody. We'll see you on the next case.